Hello there, my name is Peter Thompson uh, and in this DVD I'm going to show you how to link your two hands together so your left hand and your right hand are joined together so they can work as one unit. In the left hand grip DVD lesson we gave you the one finger test so the club is supported just by one finger, the first finger of the left hand and in the right hand we gave you the two finger test so the club sits neatly into the base of the middle two fingers of the right hand. I'll now show you how to join the two hands together and it will only work effectively if your left hand grip is correct and your right hand grip is correct. There are three ways of doing this we have an overlapping grip, an interlocking grip and a two-handed grip. I'm going to move down towards the camera now so you can see the differences but essentially it won't affect the way your hands work in the swing. This is my normal grip, the overlapping grip. If I change to the interlocking grip which is there, and then change again to the double handed grip, which is there. You will see that the view from the front of both hands hasn't changed. The overlapping grip is when the little finger of the right hand goes in between the first and second knuckles of the left hand, it simply overlaps. Then position again the middle two fingers of the right hand alongside of the grip and wrap your right hand over. So now your right hand has covered your left thumb completely so you can't see the left thumb. The overlapping grip used to be used by most golfers until maybe 15, 17 years ago and Tiger Woods then came on the scene and most people then changed from the overlap grip to his grip which is the interlocking grip. Interlocking simply means the first finger of the left hand comes off and then the little finger of the right hand goes in between the first and second fingers of the left hand so you interlock and then again you wrap your right hand over so your right hand covers your left thumb completely. Probably until Tiger Woods came along maybe 90% of golfers would overlap and now it seems to me as if most people tend to interlock. It doesn't make a huge difference. Overlapping, interlocking, the grip from the front angle from where we are now stays the same. If you interlock then you have three fingers of the left hand and three fingers of the right hand on the golf club and the other first finger, little finger are not on the club, they're interlocking and with the overlap grip you have your little finger on top of the first finger so you now have four fingers of the left hand and three fingers of the right hand on the golf club. So interlocking six fingers in contact, overlapping seven fingers in contact. The other grip third grip, handy grip or the two handy grip and from the front it will, will look like this again the right hand is covering the left thumb completely and then from this side you will see that all the fingers of the right hand and the left hand are on the golf club not a very popular grip at all I can't believe anyone who uses that grip at this moment in time I once watched Gold Diaries go around my father's golf course, uh, Belton Park Golf Club, Grantham, Lincolnshire in the UK and Diaries came along and with a two-handed grip went around the golf course in 65 shots. So the double-handed grip isn't wrong, a few of my pupils do use that grip but the most popular grip now is probably the interlocking grip. Jack Nicklaus uses that one, Tiger Woods as we mentioned and then the overlapping grip. Guess it's your choice. Thing is that 
from the front angle, the grip hasn't changed. Overlapping, interlocking, double handed, it tends to say exactly the same. So, left hand, one finger test, right hand, two finger test, lock them together, right hand goes onto the club, middle two fingers behind the shaft, then your right hand goes onto the golf club so that your left thumb is completely covered. If you look at most good golfers, you will not see their left thumb because the right hand goes on top. We're trying to create a grip that is basically two hands working as one unit. Then the wrist can hinge, unhinge, and we can drive the golf ball forward. The ball is driven forward. I've been asked many, many times how tightly should one hold the golf club? And I tend to demonstrate how tight you should hold the club with a piece of wood and a nail and a hammer. If I'm going to hammer the nail into the piece of wood, I'd hold the hammer tight enough so I don't let go of it, but not too tight so that my muscles can work quite freely. Automatically, as I hit the nail, my hands will tighten. Fairly loose, tight. Loose, tight. This happens automatically, so we should hold the golf club the same way. Hold it tight enough at a dress so you don't let go of it. And then, as the club head picks up speed, the club head will be going faster and faster and faster, and automatically both of your hands will hold the club tighter. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the loosest and 10 being the tightest, I would recommend you hold it at a dress maybe on 7 or 8, so firm rather than too loose, because if it's too loose, then the club can move out of your hands, and that is always disastrous. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, 7 or 8, at a dress, as you swing down to hit the ball, automatically that will increase to 10. So don't try and make that happen, simply let that happen. Another aspect of the way the club is held would be the size of your grip. When I fit grips, I give people a choice of eight different sizes, and the size is correct when, with your left hand, the middle two fingers just touch your left thumb. If the grip is too small, then these two fingers will dig in to your left thumb. If the grip was way too big, then the middle two fingers wouldn't touch your thumb. So, too big, you can't hold it properly because your fingers are not surrounding the golf club. Too small, same problem, fingers digging in. You want to try and hold the club correctly and have a grip the right size so that all of your fingers can simply hold the golf club with no gaps in here. So I use eight different sizes and I suggest that you have your grip sizes checked regularly and once you know the right size, your pro should be able to tell you the right size. Once you know the right size, make sure that all of your clubs in the bag are the same size. So there are the two hands positioned together. I'm now going to go over to my computer screen and show you Ross Fisher, who is a top European golf professional holding the golf club and we'll see the way he holds the club throughout the swing and what happens to his grip and his hinge as he swings the golf club back and forward.
So here's Ross Fisher, and you will see that the right hand covers the left thumb. He's got this little kink in his left wrist, which we mentioned when we showed you the left hand grip. And in the swing, you will see the wrists are now hinging, and the wrists will hinge usually automatically if you hold the club correctly. And if you don't, then this simply won't. At the top of the swing, you will see the kink in the left wrist is still there. So if there's a kink in the left wrist at address, then it will stay there throughout the swing. There's the top of the swing and a nice big wrist hinge. And again, a wrist hinge is going to be based on how your wrist will hinge, not somebody else's. There can be a difference of almost 90 degrees between a very flexible wrist and a slightly stiffer wrist. So don't try and hinge your wrist more than you can do, otherwise you'll let go of the golf club. So coming down to hit the golf ball now. Again, look at the grip, look at the badge. And the wrists are unhinging all the way down. That's what you want. We don't want a late hit or an early hit. We want a hit that's on time. Coming down to the actual impact position now. And there's the ball taking off. The palm of the right hand, as you can see, is pointing parallel to the target line. Don't forget the right hand mirrors the face of the golf club. Now the ball's gone. There's a circle there where the ball was. And there's the ball taking off. The important thing now is that the club face is still square. And his hands are not turning over. Not turning over. No release, no rolling of the wrists. The face is still square. There's the ball moving away now. And the ball was in the circle. Club face has now gone forward probably 18 inches. Now two feet. And the face is still more or less square. Then automatically, with a good grip, the hands will start to turn over. Naturally, one shouldn't try and do that. Let's go back to the impact again. So, no release, ball being driven forward, the ball is always driven forward, the club face is still square, and it's still square, then automatically the hands will turn over, onto the finish, good swing, great grip, great impact position. So there we have the grip. Both hands are joined together, one unit. You may overlap if you wish, or interlock, or use a double handed grip. It doesn't make a huge difference really. The important thing is that both of your hands are pointing in the right direction and you can hinge your wrists quite comfortably and you won't let go of the golf club. Left hand grip, one finger test right hand grip, two finger test, then join them together so your right hand covers your left thumb completely. You will find very few, if any, good golfers who hold the club with the left thumb visible. That would be wrong, that would be wrong, that would be wrong. We want the right hand just to cover the left thumb. And there's a grip, all joined up, all designed to let your hands work together, let your wrist hinge, unhinge, and drive the golf ball forward. The golf ball is driven forward, but only with a good grip. Is this possible? Good grip, ball can be driven forward. Thank you very much. Thank you.